Hello everyone, welcome to Sunday Catch Up. Good to see you guys again. I hope you have had a fantastic week. I've been hanging out in Edinburgh this week with my daughter Rosa. I've had her. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Adam Holmes. I'm a songwriter from Edinburgh in Scotland. I've spent 13 years creating albums, releasing albums, doing gigs, and now I'm shifting to more of an online presence, building a community online of people who care more about creation than consumption, and hopefully do my little bit to make the world a better place. I thought today I could share 10 ways to be an artist. And this week, as I say, I've been hanging out with Rosa. It's trickier when you've got little kids, isn't it, to carve out that space. I don't know if you guys find that. I find when there's a wee kid around, it's just harder to find the moments. But you have to, because being an artist is all about using the moment you have. It's not about waiting for the perfect moment, waiting for the retreat. It's about using what you have available. And hopefully some of the techniques and, and tips that I'm going to share in today's episode can help you, even if you are running another business or working really hard or raising kids. Hopefully these are still techniques that you can use to make your artistic life a little bit easier, a little bit more fulfilling. And I'll dive right in. The first one is to play the opposites game. Now, what I mean by that is I enjoy thinking about people as always the opposite of how they seem. It's a frame that helps me understand the kind of complexity of humanity. It's really easy, especially in this age of social media, to chop out one little sentence or one little snippet about someone and turn that into who they are as a person. But I like playing the opposites game. I like to look at someone and realize that I have a preconceived idea of who I think they are and ask myself, what if the opposite is true? But also for myself, as an example, I like to wear these kind of like woolly jumpers uh, and grow a beard and just be welcoming and warm uh, as a person, but also I like to be a savage and learn how to fight and uh, do boxing training and acknowledge the, the vicious side of myself or, uh, you know, to wear like really, really nice watches with very kind of uh, rough secondhand clothes or to just give myself permission, honestly, to explore all the different aspects of myself, to be a dark horse, to show up as a dark horse, to appear really friendly and have really, really strong boundaries, for example. And I think what can happen a lot in relationships, long-term relationships, marriages and family units, is people enjoy those relationships because they get a sense of security and comfort from feeling like they know someone and they know everything about someone. And actually playing the, the opposites game helps us keep relationships alive in the sense that if your partner is constantly expecting you to be a certain way and then you're not, it's something that can bring a level of spice and humanity into your relationship. No one should feel like they're just contained in this small box of being a certain way, being a certain person. So it's good to play the opposites game and it's good to explore the different aspects of yourself. The second way to be an artist is to think about what you wear. I watched a talk with Robert De Niro and he was asked about things that he would use to get into character and he said one of the biggest ones for him was clothing, that when he was wearing certain clothes that could help him feel like a different character. And right now I'm wearing this, this woolly jumper and I feel at home, I feel calm, I feel peaceful. I could be wearing a suit and feel sharp and slick 
I could be wearing uh, jeans and feel like a worker, like a grafter, like a builder. So clothes really can influence how you feel. And it can become like dressing up like uh, when you were a kid, it can become like that. You can try things on, see how you feel with certain things on. And that can influence you. It can influence your art. The third way to be an artist is to be mysterious. I like to put myself into locations where people don't know who I am. Because again, one of the beautiful things about really getting to know people and, and getting into long-term relationships is there's an expectation of how you're going to show up in that relationship. And that goes for coffee shops that you frequent or pubs that you frequent as well as family units, as well as relationships. And so switching up your location, going somewhere where no one knows who you are, you can walk into that room and look around and hold a certain presence in that room and it feels good. And it, it, it gives you different views on your art. Think about how artists have to be alone, writers have to be alone, they can't just be within the family unit at all times. They have to be um, mysterious to some extent to be able to generate artistic ideas. So putting yourself in, in different locations can help you do that. The fourth way to be an artist is to observe the strangeness of life. Similar to the previous point, if you can put yourself in a, uh, an unusual location, a place that you're not normally in, and just sit and watch how people are with each other, what people are doing, how they're speaking to each other. When we're in a, a family unit or a close friendship, we normalize things that are pretty strange. Human life is pretty strange. Human behavior is pretty strange. Our rituals our ways of being in the world, our ways of communicating and relating to one another, the things that we normally do when you break them down and look at them are odd. A bus is a collection of metal constructs with um, a collection of like homo sapien monkeys sitting on it and one monkey moving and steering this uh, massive metal construction through time and space to take these monkeys to a place where they believe that they have quote unquote a job, which is uh, a, a story that they've all agreed on. That means that they arrive in a place at a certain time in order to get bits of paper to then live in a cave. It's all odd, it's all strange. And giving yourself permission to observe the strangeness of it is a brilliant way of generating creative ideas. Creativity is about disruption. And if you're just locked into the story, you're not getting the space to come up with those kind of creative ideas. So giving yourself permission to deconstruct life around you. I was a builder and I can no longer look at a door in the same way because I learned how a door was made. I learned how you built the frame and put in the different parts and put in the panel in and then put in the little strips of um, of wood down the sides and I look at doors now differently, I look at buildings differently, I know how they're constructed because I've deconstructed them and that can give you a very creative outlook on the world, you can be looking at the world in a very creative way. The fifth way to be an artist is to recognise the simple fact that artists have boundaries Artists have ruthless boundaries. An example being, right before I came to record today, I said to Rosa, I need 10 minutes where you're not shouting. And she shouted. And I felt like a, a rage. I know that <laughs> those of you that are parents will know what I mean. But I felt angry about it. I sat with her, I said, that's not okay. I need my space to record this uh, talk. But similarly, I take my 10 minutes every morning and I'm ruthless about it. And even if we have guests or someone's visiting or someone needs something, it's no, I need that time and I'm going to take it. And similarly, if I'm going to write, I need that space, I need that time. It's 
about taking yourself seriously and making it important and understanding that people uh, might think that's ridiculous or silly or superfluous or additional extra to what you actually need. But it's not. It's your water, it's your oxygen. Your solitude as an artist is your oxygen. You need it. You need it like you need water. So there's no problems about telling people that's what you need. And if they have a problem with that, good luck having a relationship with you. I've had relationships that didn't make it because people didn't understand I needed that. And all artists that I know are the same. They have ruthless, ruthless boundaries. What is a boundary? A boundary is not a way to control other people. It's a very misunderstood concept. A lot of people think a boundary is a way to get other people to do a thing you want. It's not. A boundary is, hey, here is my frame. That's where I am. If you want to come in and, and be around this frame, and that's great. But that's where I am. And if you step in and break that boundary, here's going to be the consequence. And uh, that could be, I can't hang out in the house or I'm going to go out or um, I'll tell you I don't like it. But ultimately, there's a, there's a consequence to someone stepping within your frame. So developing that sense of frame as an artist is, uh, I wouldn't even say it, you just... It's not even important. You just have to. You just need to. You need that space. The sixth way to be an artist is to recognize that artists care about ugliness and artists care about beauty. And there's no space for anything in between. Put yourself in situations that are beautiful. Put yourself in situations that are ugly and embrace it. Sometimes I'll be doing a gig and there can just be a, a kind of ugly moment in the gig. I could tell a joke that doesn't land. I could feel too hot or sweaty or just forget a word or just, you know, something goes wrong, but that's human, it's humanity. And that ugliness is so compelling in a way. Some of the most compelling performances that I've ever seen, be that in film, be that in music, be that in... Uh, uh, theater, dance, anything. Some of the most compelling performances I've seen have been the ugliest. It's been the feeling that someone's willing to kind of fall on their face in front of you. It's a very generous thing to do. As an artist, you want to uh, seek that ugliness or allow it. And also you want to unashamedly appreciate beauty. If you see something beautiful, you take it in and you enjoy it. And you enjoy beautiful things. I enjoy beautiful rooms, beautiful watches, beautiful people, beautiful cities, beautiful places. I enjoy it. And also, when I'm stuck in a train carriage between two other carriages and there's a toilet and there's no space and it's hot and I'm, I enjoy that too. I enjoy it. You have to enjoy it, embrace it, embed it, take it in. The seventh thing which can help you be an artist, seventh way to be an artist, is allowing an impulsivity. Your impulses are like fire. If you allow them in and you learn how to use them, they can heat your house. Obviously, impulsiveness is something which can burn a house to the ground. And so many of us are taught as children and taught by the system and taught by school that your impulses are a bad thing and that you should learn how to squash your impulses and contain them. And the issue with that is that the whole practice of creativity is about the willingness to be impulsive. There could be a moment in the studio, a moment on the stage, a moment in life where an impulse comes to you and the difference between creating this amazing piece of art that really helps someone or connects to someone and creating something which is just there and like background noise, sometimes that difference is a little impulse to say something or do something a certain way, present something a certain way. In acting, people often talk about choices. 
I really like that frame on creativity and I'd like to hear it used more in terms of music or comedy or any of the creative practices. Painting, it's choices. What are choices if not an impulse? It's, it's an impulse rising through you and the ability to allow that impulse. When you do allow that impulse, you're going against a lot of the system which tells you sit still, don't swing your legs, go here, be in this queue. The, the system works best to create a median result across a vast number of individuals. It's not designed for us to allow those impulses to come up. So you're really working against the system a lot of time as an artist. The eighth way to be an artist is to recognize artists can work without results. I can work for 10 years without seeing the fruit and I have. The first 10 years of my career, I saw some feedback, but I was nowhere near where I needed to be, where I wanted to be as an artist. And I see this in uh, entrepreneurs who do really well also. It's a, I mean, entrepreneurs and art, entrepreneurship, sorry, is an art. It's an art form. You have to be, you have to have faith, you have to have trust that the path you're on is leading you where you need to go. And you need to be willing to just be on that path for your whole life. I'm on the path for my whole life. I'm not thinking, let me wind up in a couple years being really good at this or that. If I step onto a path, that's me. I started getting interested in cameras 10 years ago and I'm still on that path. I'm still on the path of enjoying and appreciating cinematography and learning about and getting better at and looking at light, looking at angles, looking at lenses. I started playing guitar 15 years ago and I'm just, I'm learning. I'm a student. I started writing songs 15 years ago. I'm learning. I'm constantly learning. I want to spend my life creating without needing results. I mean, results happen for me now because I just do so much stuff that results happen, but I don't even really think about it anymore. There are times where I have to push for a certain result, definitely in terms of some of the administrative side of things. Like if I'm going to generate an online concert, it just takes time. I need to, I need to make sure that I actually get that result. And running a business is like that. I have to get people things at certain times more so. But what I'm talking about right now is ways to be an artist and creativity. And I would say that if you can just make it that you just show up and you keep making stuff and then sometimes you share that but it's not the point is not to make something then share it that's not the point at all the point is to make stuff because then you get to spend your one human life making stuff that's the only point of course you need to make money we need money to to live it's the lifeblood of our uh, society and it keeps us all harmonious with one another so if you can find a way to make money out of your art great but the main thing is can you work and work without result can you work for a year two years three years ten years your whole life if you can and if you're impatient it's probably not for you just like anything just like the great investors, they're not thinking, I need to create a great investment in two months. That's gambling. It's about that, that long horizon. The ninth way to be an artist is artists think for themselves. Know that. An artist thinks for themselves. Bob Dylan was asked, who would you vote for? And he said, I would, I would live under a king if there was a good king. That's a great example. That's an artist thinking for themselves. You're not just going to this stock answer 
okay, what can I say in this situation? Who's the lesser of two evils? That's the issue with not thinking for yourself is you'll end up going for the lesser of two evils. An example from my own life is I don't own property. I don't want to. I don't actually want that in my life. Now, I'm lucky in the sense my mum and my dad gave me a lot of capacity for challenging my own thought, which is an amazing inheritance to receive. And I challenge the thought around mortgages and home ownership as a concept to the point where I realized it's a game that I want out of. I want to spend my human life, my time, my only resource which I have, which is non-renewable and has any kind of value whatsoever, is my time. And I want to spend that in creative practice. And if I was a homeowner, I would be spending a good chunk of it. That would be my creative practice. If you want to um, own homes or be an interior designer or anything like that, go for it. If, if that lights you up and it, and it makes you feel like an artist, you can be an artist at anything. I know for me, I just want to pour my life energy and every spare ounce of it into this. And if I'm focused on owning things, the art of owning things, then that's going to take away time. And time's all I have. So artists think for themselves. It's about looking at what's out there and really thinking for you, what do I want? What do I actually want? What do I want my... Not what do I want as a result, but what do I want my days to look like? What do I want my days to be filled with? So thinking for yourself. The tenth way to be an artist, the tenth and final way. And I'm really just thinking on the spot here because I just kind of was thinking about this today. I'm not 100% on what this means, but it feels my impulse is to share it. The tenth way is always to be a host and never to be the guest. What I mean by this is artists are people who have dedicated their life to service. It's, it's probably similar to being a priest for the modern age. Your job is to facilitate community, to bring people together and to give them a space in which they can process their feelings, to give them a space in which they can connect to other human beings. I'll be completely honest, that can be a lonely job. You can be the one who books the venue, shows up, makes it sound good, makes it feel nice, has people come, people connect, they laugh, they sing along, they leave and they're with their loved ones. And sometimes then you're the one who is sitting in a travel lodge next to a motorway just with yourself. And you have to know that if you're dedicating your life to it, then that can be the reality a lot of the time. You can spend weeks just suffering, making music, to then make an album which can become a home to other people. And I'll leave you with that point that if you're not willing to suffer, you won't be able to create those examples for other people. I feel my life is here to be an example. I'm here to be an example of someone who came from a disadvantaged upbringing in the sense of financially and in the sense of um, chaotic and abusive elements. And I stand here today as someone who's built an amazing life and I'm now able to share my art, not only my art, but hopefully share my example for other people who've come from disadvantages, disadvantaged places and yet want to live a big life and want to reach a lot of people. And so that's what my life is for. But I think if you're going to set out on the path to be an artist, you have to know that on some level, you're always going to be the host and not the guest. And that's okay. That's a good life. If you enjoy these tips, if you enjoy my example, if you appreciate my example, if you appreciate my content and my output, 
I would really, really appreciate, excuse me, if you would consider joining my Patreon. I'm going to put a link in the description. It's only £1.50 a month at the lowest tier. Obviously, you can contribute more if you want to. But I wanted to make it affordable so that anyone could join me in there and support something meaningful. And in return for your £1.50, I'm offering hours and hours of content, songwriting workshops, behind the scenes look at artistry, unreleased music, other exclusive content. And it supports me to keep making content like this and keep making music. Thank you very much for listening, everyone. I hope you guys have a great week ahead. And uh, I'll look forward to chatting to you guys soon. Cheers.